Welcome back to another session. I, I hope you were well. I I would like to talk about um, the whole idea that I shared in the prior session about uh, is depression self-inflicted. And in the session prior, I, I made reference to how there is something empowering about understanding and accepting that if the narrative you choose is one, such as I put forward that says it's up to me then there's an empowerment in that message that also says that you can transcend this suffering the other narrative is where you say well it's nothing within my control it just happens to me life just happens to me and therefore um, there's nothing I can do I am trying but the outcome what can I say I just hope with the first message, you are saying, I am the master of my ship. I am in charge of my destiny. Despite the winds and the waves and the tides and the burdens, I will set my sail and I will be steadfast to my faith and I would ensure that I stay focused on my destination. And in setting my sail, I would never give up and I would never give in. The other message is simply saying, well, there is a puppet master somewhere. There is something and someone. There is a script. There is a code that has been written into the script for which I have no control over. I cannot change. That things would therefore happen to me. Not because of anything that I am doing in the present, but because it's all part of the great design. I, I personally will wish upon anyone I know the first the former script, which says that there is something you can do. You can take charge. You can be responsible. Uh, you can take ownership. You, you need not bother about the outcome. But you can say, I can choose the direction that I travel in. I can choose the destination I want to get to. I can choose the disciplines that will lead me in that, in that direction and towards that destination. And I can choose the desires of my heart. I would wish that on anyone. But in dealing with this whole concept about it's, it's, it's depression, anxiety, concern, worry, doubt, absent clinical cases, is it self-inflicted? Let me read something from the NHS's website, uh, www.nhs.uk. Uh, this is on the mental health uh, and depression in adults section. It states, depression in, in adults, overview. Depression is more than simply feeling unhappy or fed up for a few days. Most people go through periods of feeling down. But when you are depressed, you feel persistently sad for weeks or months rather than just days. Some people think depression is trivial and not a genuine health condition. They are wrong. It is a real illness with real symptoms. Depression is not a sign of weakness or something you can snap out of by putting yourself together. The good news is that with the right treatment and support, most people with depression can make a full recovery. And then it goes on to explain how to tell if you have depression um, and when to see a doctor, what causes depression, depression treatment, living with depression. Now, I don't know about you. Let me speak to myself and for myself. There's something that is not empowering about what is, is written or what was written on that website. I agree with a section of it, the final paragraph, which says um, the good news is that with the right treatment and support, most people with depression can make a full recovery. My focus is that most people can make a full recovery. I don't know so much about the right treatment and the right support because the medical profession treat depression in a very, very poor way. Um, you're given too many medications um, and uh, drugs and 
you're, you're left with a very disempowering message. I disagree with most of what was said in the earlier paragraphs by the NHS. I think absence, clinical depression, most depression is self-inflicted. And by the same logic, I think absent clinical depression, most people who suffer depression can make a full recovery by looking to themselves, by changing who they are, by changing their self-image, self-identity, self-concept, by developing a, a new uh, uh, narrative about their future, by making sacrifices, taking steps, by having temperament, discipline, focus, being honest with themselves, and surround, surrounding themselves with the right message, sometimes harsh, but true, sometimes unforgiving, but well-intended. I think most people can change their path because I think most people have greatness within them. They have the tools within them. They understand and should know the rules surrounding them. And therefore, with the right tools of the trade and understanding the rules of the game, you can make a change. Everybody can make a change. Now, it doesn't mean we will have 100% success, but what it guarantees is that you would have 100% movement away from where you are towards where you believe you should be. Now, most people who suffer from depression, um, and, and it would be remiss of me not to acknowledge that people's circumstances vary but I, I, I do not disagree with that position. But I think we are more alike than we are different. And that a lot of the times, what we, what we lack in our psyche is resilience, tolerance, tenacity, discipline. Um, you might say grit, emotional, psychological grit. Uh, I don't know about you, but I, I know from, for myself and I know most people who um, perhaps are into certain hobbies and interests will tell you, those who cycle, when they cycle regularly and when they cycle regularly with intention and they are constantly looking to improve and grow uh, and become better than they were the day prior. They see changes over incremental periods that they cannot actually put their hand to at the moment. But looking backwards, they realize, well, I just took off two seconds from my personal best over a month or two months. And, and that has come not because I did one thing on one day, but because I did several things repeatedly with spaced repetition, with consistency with focus and determination and with a goal in mind to improve. And, and I know most people will relate to this. And therefore, it is my belief that in the same way that we train our bodies and we can see people who are physically athletic or physically robust or fit, and it doesn't come from the ether. It comes from a self-imposed vision they've given themselves and a self-inflicted level of discipline based on that vision. And they do such feats, as we call them, which are normally common to most people who have the same goals, but it seem unnatural to most people who lack the ambition and set goals. And what we find is by having a vision, that vision linked to a purpose. That purpose linked to a set of goals. Those goals molded by a lifestyle. The lifestyle supported by habits. Those habits uh, scheduled by routines. Those routines fueled by the way you think based on what you expose yourself to, what you see, what you hear, the associations around you, therefore controlling how you feel. By following that pathway backwards, begin with the end in mind and just walk backwards. 
you come to the point where you realize that your feelings are things that you can control. They're very hard, I will admit, they are very hard to control. But there are things, your feelings can be controlled. So if you go back to this, the narrative given by, from the NHS's website, where he says, um, the range of depression ranges from last and feelings. Now pay attention to the words that are used in this section. Let me read the section again, just so um, um, everyone understands. How to tell if you have depression. This is from the NHS's website. Actually, let me start with the overview. It says, depression is more than a simple feeling. First time of the word feeling is used. Feeling unhappy or fed up. Um, most people go through periods of feeling down. Second time, feeling. Um, but when you are depressed, you feel persistently, another feel, third, persistently sad for weeks or months rather than just a few days. Some people think depression is trivial and not a genuine health condition. They are wrong. Uh, it is a real illness with real symptoms, um, and it goes on. You see, in, in that short two paragraphs, we've talked about feelings, 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 feelings. I hope you can see the common denominator, feelings. Now, the key question is, where do your feelings come from, therefore? If you go with my perspective that depression is self-inflicted, and if, according to the professionals, they are saying that there's a strong element of your feelings in how you, you experience life. The key question is, where do your feelings come from? How are they made, formulated, created? How do they influence you, affect you? Uh, how do they control your life or empower your life? Feelings are important. But if you do not understand how your feelings come about, you will always suffer and you will always be a slave to your feelings. Now, the key question is to the human person, what do we call feelings? Why do we use the word feelings? A feeling is, a, is an effect. It's an effect of an underlying cause. Let me take a step back. Everything around this universe, this beautiful universe we have, is energy. All matter is energy. It's a form, a derivative of energy. We are all energy. Energy can exist in two different, two different or two or more different, you might say, frequencies or phases. And so if you look at this pencil, this is energy. Um, the paper I have here in the form that it shows itself, this is energy. This paper has been produced by converting a form of energy to another form of energy. The drink that I have, forgive me for, for sharing it, but this drink here contains uh, it's cucumber. This is a drink of water and cucumber. Um, there is water in there and there is cucumber. The cucumber plant is 90% water. Another form of energy absorbs energy from the sun. Um, it has what we call EZ water or fourth phase water, ordinary water mixed with green juicing, which has more fourth phase water. But that fourth phase water is by virtue of the, the in, 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 um, in this irradiation absorbed from the sun, energy from the sun transformed into a plant. We squeeze it into a drink, energy. We are all energy. This energy resonates at a frequency, a vibration, um, and we can measure this. Speak to the scientists and we can measure it. When the human body and when you are on a level of vibration or frequency that can be known or understood scientifically, we give it a, a name or a title. But to most people who are not so inclined, you might say, from an engineering perspective or from a scientific perspective um, or from a science perspective, we use words to describe what we believe our states to be in. The word we chose was feelings. So human beings use the word feelings to describe the state of resonance, the quality of the energy, the state of vibration that their physical body is in. We try to interpret 
the state we find ourselves physically using a word we call feelings. So when people say, I feel great, and even with yourself, when you say, I feel great, one of the things I, I hope you would notice is that there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a certain, you have a certain beat to your rhythm, um, uh, a new lease of life, you feel excited, you, you feel as though you've got this extra energy, again, the word energy, you, you feel as though, you know, I feel great, man, I feel, I feel good. Um, when you feel down and upset and sad and unhappy, you can also tell your body doesn't feel as though it's, it's moving into gear. In the sessions prior, I talked about your adrenals and your thyroid accelerator pedal, which helps you accelerate in life. And your adrenal, which acts as a gearbox to change courses, you, know, you go from key three to two, or from two to three to four to five, um, and, and that's how life functions. That's the physical side. But there are people who eat well, and they have the right gut function, they have the right diet, they have the right mitochondria function, they have the right level of four phase water in their body. So physically they are sound, but they just do not feel good. Psychologically, emotionally, and mentally. Why? Because we are still energy. The physical, the mental, and the spiritual are all connected. I talk about how we are um, in a triunal. You know, we talk about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Human beings, a triunal as well. We have spirits, we are spirits. We live in a physical body, we have an intellect or a mind. And you see, what we call feelings is simply what we believe our present emotional, uh, but more importantly, energy state is in. Resonance, a vibration. That vibration doesn't stay fixed. I can play a song now, your favorite song, and when you're feeling down in a short while, you find that you're ready to go, you're ready to dance, you're ready to move. Similarly, I can take you to a, a, a symphony and I can play beautiful melodies and beautiful songs that, are, that have a, um, a separation of more spacings between the notes that makes you feel sad because the music is about a different energy and vibration that connects you to the human experience. So there are some certain songs that can take you high and there are certain songs that can bring you down to remember life as suffering. And there are some certain songs that can bring you up to a vibration, a frequency that makes you realize life is beautiful. You're still the same person. And what you find is that your body is resonating between two different states and fluctuating between frequencies, like a, a wave, a sine wave, you're moving. And the key question is, Every time we use the words to describe emotions, sad, mad, glad, disgusted, these are all frequencies. And what I am saying is that there are things that you can do to move you from one frequency to a higher frequency. And if you do not stay there, you drop to a lower frequency. No one stays the same. We are either growing or we are dying. We're moving forward or moving backwards. That's the law of the universe. So the whole idea that people think that they can just be is fanciful, which is why the great writer says, stand guard at the, at the, the gate of your mind. And another great writer says, uh, do not be deceived. Well, you know, God is not mocked. Whatever you sow, you reap. And another writer says, you have to renew your mind every day. Faith comes by what you hear. But fear comes by what you hear also. And faith leaves by what you hear. And fear leaves by what you hear. So every day is a war. A war in your mind. And firstly, you have to purge the mind of all the negative vibrations and thoughts. And then you have to surround the mind with positive thoughts. And then you have to recharge them and send in new troops of good positive thoughts every day just to keep you in the same position. The energy required to keep you where you are, just in a, in a neutral state of bliss, far exceeds what most people can think of in their mind. They think it's just, I'm just a happy person. No, it requires energy to stay in the same position because you cannot stay in the same position. There is work and effort and force going into keeping you there. And therefore, if you want to move forward, you need even more. So feelings are simply what we could use as descriptors for whatever vibrational state or frequency we find ourselves. So going back to what the NHS website talked about in terms of feelings, it means if you believe what I am saying, that you can change how you feel. 
by changing what you focus on, by changing how you use your intellectual faculties, and by changing your story. And connected to that story is your identity. So there is an image in your subconscious mind about who you are. And um, except you change that image to someone who is healthy, happy, prosperous, and excited about life, and peaceful, and, and, and knowledgeable, and has understanding about life, you will always suffer by virtue of the fact that the image you might have is one of ignorance, which leads to worry and doubt, which leads to fear, concern, which leads to anxiety, which you suppress, leads to depression, disintegration of your body over time, diseases, and finally your death. There are only two pathways. One is light, and that comes from knowledge and study. And the more you study and you search for more, the more you gain understanding. But you must search for the truth. Not all knowledge is true, the truth. But pursuing said truth puts you in a position whereby you're moving away from ignorance. And that puts you in a, in a, in a lane that is more empowering, gives you a sense of meaning and purpose. Now, let me not deviate from uh, the core message as I bring this to a close. If you accept that all sorts of suffering with regards to depression is self-inflicted, and if you also accept that at the core of all of our suffering with depression or anxiety is how we feel, but if you also accept what I just shared, which is that the feeling simply describes the state you are in, and that state can be changed because energy moves from one state to another. Energy never sits in one state. So you say, let there be light, and you, you shine light, and the sun comes into a space, and it changes the state or the frequency of what, whatever it comes in contact with. And all, all I am saying is, get in front of the light. Get in front of the sun. Let the energy pass to and through you, and allow the energy to flow to others, through you. And by doing that, you're allowing yourself to move up to a different frequency or different vibration, and your feelings will change. There are simple ways of doing this. I'll cover this in the next session. But one simple way is you have to know how the mind works. There is a conscious part of the mind and there is a subconscious element to the mind. Your conscious mind is your thinking mind. Your subconscious mind is your emotional mind. Now, if it doesn't mean that the conscious thinks or the subconscious emotes, it simply uses, this is used as a descriptor. It means your conscious mind has faculties, your sensory faculties. You see, Sight, taste, touch, hear. These are all faculties of the mind. There are five of them. Animals have most of what we have. They can see, they can smell, they can touch, they can taste, and they can hear. And with all of these sensory faculties, we can actually connect and interconnect with our physical world. Now we can interact with our physical world. But those senses that we have allow inputs into our conscious mind. And in our conscious mind, we can do two things. We can reject an idea or we can accept an idea. We can actually be indifferent. And if we are indifferent, and if at the moment we get that experience, we do not use what we have as intellectual faculties, which are more like the gifts we've been given as separators from, from other life forms, intuition, perception, will, memory, imagination. If we do not use all of these faculties, and there are more, but if we do not use them, then what we find is that um, whatever input we, we receive from the external world, we take that as gospel, and the most do dominant of such ideas or inputs or thoughts or pictures or, um, uh, uh, or experiences goes down into our subconscious mind by virtue of the emotional state we are in at the time when we have that experience, or that we were in during the original experience. And once it goes into your subconscious mind, the subconscious mind cannot distinguish between what's real, fanciful, imaginative, or even wrong. It doesn't change, uh, it doesn't regulate, it just simply says, you've given me this, and I'm going to multiply whatever you've given me, and I'll give it back to you. So, if you want to change your feelings, one of the things you can do is understand that it starts with what comes in. Stand guard at the gate of your mind. But also, the way it works is by what you build within. The images 
you have in your mind, the thoughts, the ideas that you present to your imagination or your 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 um, your mental states uh, with emotion, starts to form an image, and that image is what controls your life. If you have depression, it's self-inflicted. But if you suffer from depression, and it's consistently something you've suffered for, it means that in your subconscious mind you have an image of someone who is depressed. And it doesn't matter what happens externally. It doesn't matter what medications you take externally. It doesn't matter what, what professionals and doctors and clinicians tell you. You will never, you will never outperform your self-image. In order to change, you have to change that image in your subconscious mind. To attempt to change your circumstances on the outside without first changing the image that you have of yourself on the inside will amount to being a futile exercise. In the short term, you might see progress and you might see success. In the long term, you will snap back to who you are because you, that image of yourself internally is a, is a, is a regulator. It's, it's programmed to, to function and produce the outputs consistent with that image. And the key question to ask yourself for most people is, what image do I have of myself in my subconscious mind? Am I happy with that image? Now, for most people, you, you most people will not be able to, to identify what image they have. And so here's another question. What outcomes are you getting from life? One of those outcomes is if, if you're suffering from depression, then it indicates that your image, your subconscious image of yourself, is one who actually has depression. It's one who actually has become one with depression. You and depression have become one. And therefore, your outcomes tell you what image you have of self. So to change the outcomes and to change the result or to change the future, you do not work on something without. You start working on something within. Now, I hope today's session has been useful.